Well, it's certainly one of those. I mean, it's equal to writing. I mean, there are three equal things, I would say. The writing, the actual slogging it out of the filming, and the editing. Uh, so it is equal. And it just allows you so much more concentration and, uh, you know, not wasting time. You said that, uh, or maybe you were quoting from that, that in film, editing is really the only uh, original and unique uh, art. That's right. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, everything else comes from some other, I mean, writing comes from, you know, it's writing and acting comes from the theater or... You know, uh, photography comes from photography. You know, I mean, everything else. There's only one thing where which is unique to film, and that is that thing. And there's only one sort of aesthetic that is completely unique to film, and that is the way you see something edited, where you can see, you know, something from different points of view, almost simultaneously creating a new experience. As Pudovkin, he gives that example, I think, of the guy hanging the picture up on the wall and. Suddenly, you know, you see his feet slip, and you see the ladder move, and you see his hand go down, and the picture fall off the wall, you know. And in a split second, a guy, say, falls off a ladder, and you see it in a way that you could not see it any other way, except through editing. Um, so, uh, and of course, TV commercials have figured that out. I mean, uh, probably the most, uh, some of the most spectacular examples of film art, uh, if you leave content out of it, are in the best TV commercials. Uh, well, the ones that struck me, as I see, uh, I get the pro football game sent over me, and uh, Michelob did a, has done a series last year of kind of impressions of uh, people just having a good time with the editing and the photography and, the, and the, just the visual stuff is, I think, is the most brilliant I've ever seen. Have you seen any of those? City at night from a yeah. that starts. And, yeah. Something. Well, there's a variety of them. And yeah. Incredible cutting. Uh, you know, I mean, eight frame cuts and you know, just beautiful. And where, but where they, you realize in 30 seconds they've created an impression of something rather complex. Um, I've all, all, also thought that, you know, and I haven't done it, and that no one else has, is that. Uh, the ultimate way of telling a film story would have more to do with TV commercials than it does to the way they are presently told, that the uh, economy of statement and the kind of uh, visual poetry, which actually, you know, if, as I say, forget what they're, what they're doing, you know, selling beer or something, uh, it's sort of, it's really visual poetry that if you could ever actually tell a story with anything like that kind of approach, First of all, you could handle uh, vastly uh, more complex and subtle material, uh, and yeah, I'd have something that you could see people spend two million on thirty seconds. Yeah, no. And so it's a bit impractical. Yes, it's a bit impractical. But in the end, it, 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 secondly, secondly, that's precisely where Michael Cimino came from. Yeah, no, but he hasn't done it. All. I mean, it, was, it's the stories that Dick. The trouble is that. Film stories are still really rooted in, in theater. You know, you really are basically talking about scenes. Now, they may take place outdoors, and they may be a little shorter than things. And when you really want weight and heat, there's probably nothing that would substitute for the great dramatic moment fully played out. But you're frequently stuck with uh, uh, doing things which you feel could be done much more as they say, more poetically. But you have to establish the style from the beginning, and you have to do it. It has to be a certain kind of a story. I mean, it, I mean, there's no point in, you couldn't do Lee Ermey's dialogue like that. It just depends. I just, see, the story has to be written for it, and I'm not quite sure who would do it, because writers don't write uh, visual things. And, um, you know, even directors who write aren't really doing. I mean, Woody Allen's movies, which are wonderful, are still very traditional in their structure. I mean, the other problem is uh, the, the length of a movie imposes tremendous restrictions yeah. as to the amount of story you can ever tell. Certainly, if you tell it in a conventional way, which this is, 
told in a conventional way. I must say, I still would like to make a movie which is uh, structured more the way silent movies were structured than the way sound movies were. We started to talk earlier about sound. And one of the uh, prices that have been paid for sound is that you owe movies always think of scenes in terms of theatrical scenes, you know, even if they're short, you know, they're thought of as a, as a scene. Whereas in, uh, in the silent movies, uh, you could make a little simple statement like saying, Bill's uncle, and you illustrate, there's Bill's uncle on the back porch, um, you know, into something else. You had much greater uh, scope, I think, in, in a narrative. Uh, I would certainly like to make a movie which... Uh, told a story differently than a series of scenes which in most movies could be told on the stage. I mean, paying a very small price with a little bit of impressionistic uh, stage lighting and scenery changes, you, you could almost, there's very few movies that could not have been told uh, in a theater. It isn't so much saying something, it's the way you think of conveying information. And the, the dialogue tends to be the main well, way. I, I think that there's probably a much more cinematic way to do it, and it has much more to do with silent movies. But people, people accepted it in 2001. Even that, though, was seen. You know, there's a scene, somebody comes in, uh, something... Wait. Scenes are of a certain length. I have a feeling that you could have a story that had much greater narrative scope. Certain things would merely be illustrated and other things would be dramatized. I mean, in most films, everything is dramatized. Nothing is uh, just lightly illustrated and, and, uh, and saves itself to decide which, which things need dramatic weight and which things could just be visually illustrated and just stated simply. I mean, only the silent films have done that. And TV commercials, 30 seconds, um, a point is made. Since I have always found it very easy to make, to do the visual side of movies, I never, I never even worry. The problem with audiences is, is the story. Movies are not uh, disappointing because they're disappointing visually. They're disappointing because they're just boring and um, there's nothing about them that really um, moves you or gets to your imagination. I would say your problem more is how do you, where do good stories come from? Is there ever going to be a way to combine the structure of the silent movie with the quick presentation of an ideal of the TV commercial? Maybe a poet has to do it, because I don't know. A novelist will never do it. A playwright will never do it. And if you're not a writer, you probably never do it. So somewhere, somebody has to be able to take the wonderful economical structural possibility of a silent movie with the... Um, tremendous power that a good TV commercial can generate on a topic in 30 seconds. I still think this would be the most exciting thing that uh, happened since uh, whoever it was cut the two first films together and realized you could have editing. Gosh. You really need a sort of like an editing of the mind, which hasn't happened. Just tell a story in a different way. I mean, I think visually it is beautiful, but I think the thing that is so striking about the film is the story and the, uh, and, and, and the, and the, the sense that you get of rea the reality, that, the kind of reality that the film presents. This is what people are, you know, being blown away by, uh, apparently, in America. I don't think they've ever actually been hit by this kind of an impression. I think they're responding to the, um, really, to the story and to the tone. Television is a good influence because TV commercials are so beautifully realized that uh, it's making movie cameramen more aware of what they should be That's doing. Easy. Movie directors realize that there's something there besides just saying, you know, to the operator, a neat figure shot in this direction. Real explosion will, will come when someone finally uh, liberates the, uh, the narrative structure.